In the previous video, we learned that in SvelteKit, form actions allow you to post data to a server without having to rely on client-side JavaScript. You can define form actions in plus page.server.js file. In this video, let's create our first form action in SvelteKit. We're going to begin by creating a new plus page.server.js file within the auth folder. This file can contain a server load function. So export, const, load, and this is a function. However, our focus is not on loading page data, so I'm going to comment out this line. Our focus is on defining form actions. To define form actions, we're going to export a constant called actions, which is an object. This object can contain several key value pairs. For our first form action though, the key is going to be default. This is an async function. This function receives the same arguments as the API endpoint. So we destructure request and cookies. Within the function body, our first task is to get hold of the form values. Instead of using JSON, we use form data. Const data is equal to await request.formData. On this returned data object, we can invoke the get method to retrieve the form field values. Let's get hold of username and password. Data.get, the name attribute is username. Similarly, password is data.get, name attribute of the field, which is password. Our next step is to handle missing credentials. Now the if condition remains the same, but within the if block, we don't return a response. We simply return an object. In our case, we return message, set to missing username or password. If both form values are present, we set a cookie and then return an object where message is set to logged in. We have successfully created our first form action. But how exactly does this work? Well, when you submit a form, from plus page.svelte file, the default form action in page.server.js is automatically invoked with the right arguments. This action will execute handling the login functionality, which means we can now get rid of the JavaScript we've added in page.svelte file. We do have to make a few additions though. First, on the form, we set method is equal to post. Second, we declare a prop called form. And this refers to the object returned from the form action. In the HTML, we can render form.message with optional chaining. And if the message doesn't exist yet, empty string. Let's head to the browser and test it out. Click on login and we see the error message. Fill in the details, click on login and we are logged in. We see the message as well as the cookie. Our code works as expected. And you can see JavaScript has been disabled all along. Form actions allow you to post data to a server without having to rely on client-side JavaScript. Now there are a few more topics to cover under form actions, so join me in the next video where we will learn about named form actions. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.